the, mm, like no i'm not i'm not like fay level you know what oh, i mean like no, no, no you are what are you talking about <laughs> lies, bro no no Anifa, i'm your biggest fan Faye, sorry but i already <laughs> took that so. I, I think we have to fight it out sonia i mean <laughs> do you have her merch i have her merch <laughs> Nanti ya, habis COVID aja ya, berantem. Yeah. Soalnya sekarang susah gitu. Oh my God, I wish we could, we could meet everyone right now. Oh my God. You're so good. Soon, soon. Hopefully very soon. Mungkin kita tunggu kayak semenit, dua menit lagi, atau mau mulai sekarang aja? Should we wait like two or three more minutes, or do you guys wanna um, start now? Um, kayaknya tunggu semenit lagi ya kak. Oke. Okay. Tunggu biar agak rame lagi. Sip sip. Oke. Okay. Hey, why aren't you in the the, the bookshelf background? <laughs> you want to choose the backgrounds for me? <laughs> no, this is my mom's room. I I stole her room. Soalnya wifi-nya lebih kencang di sini. Jadi ya udahlah daripada nanti takutnya mati nyala mati nyala kan. Oh iya, yeah. another funny story about me and Faye's call. Pas itu, so face video kayak like, kayak apa ngelag gitu terus berhenti berhenti. Jadi aku kan panik kayak, oh my god, you can't do this later. <laughs> and it was like only for that day. And we we're like, you know what? Let's just do WhatsApp call. Like why why why? Is <laughs> we went call for so long. We called for like apa dua jam nyampe nggak sih? Hour? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you guys have to be very, very, very prepared for this workshop since you guys yeah. two hours. <laughs> Harusnya kita nggak cerita. Now the there's like more pressure. <laughs> we were literally talking about like everything but this, you know. Don't expose, don't expose. Okay, no, no, we were talking about this completely, you know, for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Hi, girls. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ka. Hi. How are you, girls? Did you guys have a good five-minute break? <laughs> yeah. Good. Um. Was that workshop useful for you guys? How to Google? Yes, Ka. Amazing. All right, we're gonna have another life-changing session, right, Hanifa? Right, um, Faye? Another life-changing session <laughs> is coming up right now. Okay. So should I start or go for it? Okay. Okay. Let's start. Hi everyone, apa kabar? Hi. Hi. Okay. I hope you're all enjoying your time so far the summer club. My name is Hanifa. I was an ex rookie last year summer club, and um, you might see me pop up, you know, here and there for these past workshops this summer club to help out gitu. So, jadi, I'll be your moderator today. Kalau bisa kalian juga nyalain your videos ya. Okay, let's just get right into it. Um, we have a really really cool guest with us today. Everyone, please welcome and say hi to Faye. Hey. Hi. Hi Kafe. Hi Faye. Hi Faye. Hi. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Am I introducing myself or is uh, or is Hanifa introducing me? Let me introduce her. <laughs> She is the founder of Rumah Pay, and she's also listed in in Indonesia's Forbes 30 under 30 at 17 years old, guys. Oh, <laughs> so cool. Okay, nanti Faye bakal jelasin lebih detail apa itu Rumah Pay, her journey, and everything about that. Uh, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, terus kalau kalian ada pertanyaan untuk Faye, nanti silakan tanya aja. Di session ini nanti kita bakalan pilih lima pertanyaan yang paling menarik dan paling bagus nanti yang nanya pertanyaan itu bakal dapat hadiah dari Faye. So the ones who ask the top five most interesting questions will get a special gift from Faye delivered right to you. Um, to do that, you girls can go to slido.com or like Kashifa will send you a link 
uh, to this Lido uh, website in the Zoom chat. So please make sure you see it. You can access it by scanning the QR code or uh, go to sido.com and, and enter hashtag workshop 11 June. Kalian bisa nanya lewat sido.com, Kak Shiva udah taruh linknya di Zoom chat biar kalian bisa lihat. Biar juga kalian bisa tanya-tanya ke Faye, nanti kita bisa jadi interact with one another. Uh, so just a reminder, kalau kalian mau you know get the special gift atau hadiah dari Faye, jangan lupa tulis nama kalian di uh, sidonya ya pas nanya. Kalau everyone's ready and everyone has entered Slido, let's start today's talk. Ini kita bakal santai banget, so kalau kalian mau tanya aja di tengah-tengah aku sama Faye ngobrol, silakan banget. And kalian juga bisa raise hand using the Zoom function. And then nanti aku bakal panggil nama kalian and you guys can just ask the question to the microphone langsung and tanya Faye langsung. Uh, we'll be very chill, very relaxed, and just like a discussion. Uh, don't be shy to ask, and I'm sure Faye would be really happy to address her questions langsung. So, yeah. Semoga semua udah masuk sidonya ya. Oh, gue. Aku bisa sidonya udah ada. How are you so cool? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You can milk every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Faye. Let's just start. Can you explain to everyone a little bit about like what Rumah Fe is? Sama kayak tujuan Rumah Fe itu apa sih sebenarnya? Yeah, jadi Rumah Fe at the, you know, at the very core of it, we're a non-profit. We're an organization that works to eradicate. Jadi kita sebenarnya ada tiga issues that we handle, which is anti-child trafficking, child exploitation, and child abuse. And, you know, okay, when I say that, people tend to be a little bit shocked just because it's such a, it's such a heavy issue to talk about, especially yeah. di, mungkin di komunitas-komunitas kita, isu-isu seperti perdagangan anak, kekerasan pada anak, apalagi yang bersifat seksual, um, cases of rape against children, mm -hmm. itu susah diomongin, susah dibahas. Yeah. And so the question I always get is like, why, why did I start to talk about such a heavy issue? And the thing is, um, I never really started out to combat all these different forms of abuse against children, but I learned about child trafficking, specifically child sexual trafficking, when I was quite young. I think I was fifth or sixth grade. Then aku tuh nggak percaya banget bahwa kasus-kasus seperti itu itu terjadi di Indonesia, karena we never hear about it. You know, like other types of social justice issues, mungkin itu lebih ya istilahnya lebih populer gitu ya, lebih gampang dibahas, lebih gampang diomongin. And I was so shocked because Issues like child trafficking, you know, the word child is already in there. You know mm -hmm. that the vulnerable population is child, right? So my, my, my thought process was, if the vulnerable population was the children, why weren't the children being involved in the solution finding process? Gitu. Jadi untuk aku, untuk mencari solusi kepada, maksudnya untuk mencari solusi for any pro, pro, uh, problem, including child trafficking, the vulnerable population had to be properly engaged. So Rumah Fe, you know, now I, I'm definitely going to talk about what we do now. But when we first started, we were not even a registered nonprofit. We were not like a group of people. It was just me, my mom, and another, a couple of our friends going down ke daerah-daerah di mana anak-anak itu rentan diperdagangkan atau rentan dieksploitasikan secara seksual. And there, we just started conversations. You know, like we built relationships, we built trust. And we facilitated speakers to come in. Not to talk to the girls, but to talk with them. Gitu kan? Jadi yeah. akhirnya itu ada diskusi, ada anak-anak itu merasa nyaman untuk bertanya-tanya. And you know, like a lot of kids, they don't know cara melaporkan kasus-kasus uh, kekerasan seksual, or ex apalagi eksploitasi seksual. Um, not about their friends, much less about like if it happens to they themselves. So when we first started, it was just discussions, it was facilitating discussions, facilitating questions. But soon enough, kids started coming to us. You know, they wanted to report issues. They wanted to talk about it because mereka tuh merasa lebih aman ngomongnya sama kita daripada LSM yang lain. So akhirnya Rumah Fe grew, uh, and I'm you know I'm very proud. We just started to grow um, in proportion with what our communities needed, in proportion yeah. what we felt we could contribute well as well to the communities. Jadi akhirnya Rumah Fe jadi nonprofit beneran. We got registered as one, and Uh, we opened up with three programs. So right now we have uh, three programs, Bahasa Indonesia-nya, ya karena kita, ya, non-profit Indonesia sebenarnya Bahasa Indonesia, program kita 
3P, pencegahan, pembebasan, dan pemulihan. In English, that's prevention, rescue, rehabilitation. Um, then prevention itu ya, yeah, that's the core of what we do. It's peer-to-peer -peer education. It's working together with children. It's facilitating discussions. It's engaging children and connecting them with relevant community leaders, where, whether that's, you know, just Pak RT, bisa ama a mayor, bisa ama, you know, activists or, you know, other like orang dari Kementerian Pemberdayaan Perempuan dan Anak, just so that they understand that they have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and selain itu kita pembebasan which self-explanatory we work together with local law enforcement atau aparat penegak hukum yang lain untuk mencari anak-anak yang sudah menjadi uh, korban perdagangan atau eksploitasi seksual and we try to help them and the last one is pemulihan which is truly you know I think is a really big part of Rumah Fe we have a rumah aman that we started in Batam, Kepulauan Ria that we started in 2016 uh, I say rumah aman because it's a safe house not just a shelter jadi ada beberapa anak-anak yang mereka sudah menjadi korban kekerasan dan mereka kan harus ada sidang, they have to go through trial, harus melakukan witness testimony uh, dan akhirnya we help them through that process as well. So we do legal aid and everything. And so that's um, secara singkat lah a lot of what it was. Um, and you know, I'm very proud to be sharing about it today. That's that's a really good summary of everything you do in Rumah Fe and that's very interesting as well. I really like when you said um, not just talk to the children, but talk with the children. And that's exactly right when you say you're giving them a voice, you know, summarizing it like that. And uh, yeah, it's true because kita kan di Indonesia kadang ada stigma ya kalau atau tabu malahan bahas, bahas topik kayak gini. And then meanwhile, some people are struggling and they need they need a voice like uh, Rumah Fe to, to, to help them, you know, um, increase their well-being basically. Um, aku juga jadi mau nanya nih kayak so what motivated you to like start Rumah Fe? So we know what what Rumah Fe is, tapi kayak apa yang memotivasikan kamu untuk mulai ini organisasi ini? Ya, yeah, jadi jujur you know there was no kayak enggak ada malaikat gitu ya yang datang tiba-tiba you know at night you like no, there's there's none of that. Um, I wish, but no. <laughs> um, really, I think, so I grew up in a family that's very socially minded, I guess. Semua punya jiwa sosial. My mom is very passionate about education. My dad is very passionate about community empowerment um, mm. and, and agriculture. And so I think that it could and they're both very involved in like community service. Jadi dari kecil tuh, I remember, um, every weekend you know without fail daripada kita ke mall atau nonton film kita oh. tuh disuruh pergi ke panti gitu-gitu and the truth is like ya biasa lah anak like i'm not gonna put myself as like some kind of role model gitu ya i was not i did not want to go i remember very clearly i threw a tantrum like oh. do you remember when the first iron man movie came out kayaknya tahun 2008 give or take i might get this wrong i think so yeah but it came out and we had to do like another event instead and i threw a fit because i loved iron man uh -huh. and i wasn't allowed to watch and so masuku i i don't think you know this wasn't something i wasn't born with some kind of like oh i am going to try to change the world no you know <laughs> but yeah i had a family that 100 encouraged me to be um someone who can contribute to my community but they never pushed me exactly to do it they pushed me to be um, involved, but they never told me that you have to start something, you have to take initiative. And so I, I never expected that of myself. Um, so I think I grew up quite aware of like different social issues. And I think what shocked me so much about child trafficking was that I knew about all these issues that my parents taught me about, tapi perdagangan anak, apalagi prostitusi anak, aku tuh gak denger. Mm -hmm. ada orang yang mau ngobrol sama aku tentang isu itu. And so I actually caught myself very lucky because I remember coming home to my mom and saying I wanted to reach, research more about child trafficking. And she said, like, are you, you know, are you crazy? Kayak kenapa kamu mau belajar tentang hal seperti ini? Uh -huh. um, and I was so grateful because, you know, instead of shutting me down, she said, okay, tapi, so I remember every day, every like, um, kayak every weekday, I would sit down at the dinner table and I would like research about child trafficking. And my mom or my dad would sit beside me because, you know, it was a very heavy subject. So they committed, you know, to facilitating my knowledge. And they didn't know I wanted to start something. They didn't know that Rumah Fe akan didirikan. But they knew that I wanted to learn something and I wanted to do something. And so, you know, I, I started out by like, oh, aku mau donasi aja gitu. Tapi kata mama, kalau kamu yang mau membuat perubahan, kalau kamu yang punya passion, you're the one who has to start something. So, you know, it's, it's a long story started. And so we did our discussions. Um, 
But I think really what finally triggered Rumafe to start, start, um, was when, this is, I mean, agak berat, you know, but like long story short, we had been at this at this area for three or four months. And like I said, we were there to build relationships, kan? Bukan yeah. cuma sekedar datang terus pergi dan belajar <laughs> pergi gitu ya. We were asking mm-hmm. questions, we were hanging out. I knew the kids and I, I you know, I consider them my friends, right? Yeah. And um, I was I was very young. I think I was um, 10 or 11 at the time. And wow. one of the kids came to me and she was the same age. Uh, oh. I, like she didn't even call me Kat. We were, we were just friends and she said, um, Basically, she told she told me like I'll never forget this for the, as long as I live. She says um, that her grandpa who's touching her, and dia pakai katanya itu megang, and I, I didn't understand. You know, despite this being my, wife, I was like, yeah, like my grandpa touches me too. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, right. it took a second, and I realized that she was telling me that her grandfather was sexually abusing her, and. She was like, she was nine or two. Like, pokoknya we were the same age. And I couldn't comprehend. Like, first of all, the case that was happening. Dan kedua, kenapa dia maunya ngomong sama aku? Uh-huh. Ya yeah, kan? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that's when I realized, like, gini, I knew that I wasn't fit to help her through this. But I knew that I was fit to become as a friend and help her talk to somebody else about it. To a counselor, to a psychiatrist. And to not only help her talk to them, but also facilitate the meeting. Because I had access to these amazing, amazing resources. Uh-huh. Thank you my parents thanks to like the network that i'd been building at that point did it it was i think it was from there that i realized the power of peer to peer education not only the power of it tapi the importance of it gitu dan um akhirnya ya rumah fe didirikan karena aku benar-benar percaya bahwa untuk um untuk keadaan you know for there to be sustainable radical change harus yeah. ada pemberdayaan anak muda mm-hmm. that's that's really good dan and i'm really I'm even touched this, just hearing the story of you. No, you saying that a girl the same age as you, or basically the same age as me, you know, coming up to you and uh, being so openly vulnerable about um, sexual yeah. um, mm-hmm. abuse inside your own family. Like that's even what makes it worse, I guess. Jadi, aku tu, uh, if I wanna share a story a little bit. I've heard of Roma Faye when I was like grade six you guys sebenarnya. Yeah? Uh, so in my old school there was uh, this thing called community service where there was a lot of kaya, organizations that come to our schools and have booth gitu and I, and I came to Roma Faye actually. <laughs> and then kaya, I remember them telling me, a sixth grader, me uh, like oh we're an organization that focuses on Uh, helping those who were victims of child trafficking or abuse and then I was I was standing there and I was like what like it didn't hit me you know like I didn't have yeah. that kind of um, I didn't have that ability to comprehend social problems yet and I did not have that kind of social awareness jadi aku tuh belum bisa mencerna hal-hal isu-isu sosial gitu karena aku masih kecil karena aku dulu masih kecil kan I'm so worried about like what Barbie dolls, I don't know, or like, or like um, High School Musical. I don't know those things. I was too. And then so growing up, I realized that social awareness itu penting banget. And so I want to ask, what's your take on it? You know, so how important is social awareness to you? And betapa pentingnya sih uh, kita untuk memiliki kesadaran sosial, given that you're someone who has the sufficient level of um, <laughs> of social awareness at the start, at the young age, you know, like. Yeah. I try my best. Um, I guess, first of all, social awareness is so important. I think for me, um, mm-hmm. one thing I always try to emphasize when I'm talking, you know, and my friends know this as well, because it's something I find really important is just knowledge. I think mm-hmm. getting access to knowledge and mm-hmm. constantly challenging our beliefs is so important. Mm-hmm. Every, um, and I'm so lucky because I have, you know, my my group of friends, my close friends, uh, I try to find friends who have different, they have the same values, but not necessarily the same beliefs. And that's, you know, it sounds kind of strange, but it's like this. Kalau kita tuh nggak, if we don't keep challenging our beliefs, akhirnya tuh we can't defend them either. And so that's the same thing with social awareness. I believe is that especially in this day and age, sometimes <clears throat> issues that social issues are so heated, are so hard to talk about. And we even like we who are whatever any of you call yourselves, whether it's activists, whether it's somebody who's still learning, whether even it's it's feminism, we have to have the ability to step back even if we're so passionate about the issue and talk about it 
and challenge our beliefs and understand why don't people have the same beliefs as us? Because only then can we truly, truly, you know, gain people to um, agree with us or even, you know, even change our own minds. You know, I don't think, like I said earlier, I, I wasn't born necessarily socially aware. And honestly, right now, I think I still have a long way to go. I'm not the smartest at all. I'm not the most socially aware, but I do try my best to be. I do try to educate myself as much as I can. I put myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable um, and it's not fun, but I do believe that that's the only way for change to happen through community yeah. understanding, not just through tolerance, but through acceptance. And so... Um, Social awareness, I think it stems from a willingness to listen to other people and also a, a willingness to challenge our own beliefs. Um, but I think something people always forget about when we're talking about social awareness, itu tuh bahwa sometimes people are lucky when they have the support system to be social aware. Jadi kayak aku, I wasn't born socially aware, but I was definitely given the family to become super socially aware. If my mom and dad weren't so compassionate, Mereka bayangin aja kalau mereka nggak mau research tentang perdagangan anak sama aku, mungkin rumah V itu nggak pernah terjadi. Kalau mereka nggak pernah ngajak aku keluar melakukan kayak pelayanan masyarakat, mungkin aku juga malas uh, apa ngedirin rumah V, right? Um, and it's not just my parents, it's my grandparents, it's my aunts, it's my uncles. They're all very heavily involved in their community. Um, so at the end of the day, I think. Social awareness also comes from initiative. Kita sendiri juga harus nyari teman-teman uh, atau mendukung keluarga even untuk learn with us because learning is like it's it's a it's a collaborative effort I think and so I think at the end of the day social awareness yeah two I don't know how many things I listed but first of all <laughs> you have to have the support system or you have to find make or have the support system second of all you have to be willing to challenge your own beliefs and third of all to always seek knowledge right yeah that's um that, yeah that's that's great that's it makes um, sense yeah that makes sense okay <laughs> jelas enggak oh, jelas kok jelas kok kayak um you can't do this alone you know All yeah. this, this this is this is this is a collaborative effort and we can see that right now even with social media right now with the whole social injustice going on in this world right now that i'm sure everyone knows about um so speaking of change you know um could it be said that you got the courage to develop uh, rumah fe in this organization because of like your your access to to your, these resources like to your fa- your supportive family and all that like is that true yeah so great question and this is something because like for anyone who didn't know han, han and i kita udah, kita udah bahas like 20 times in the past like what half an hour but we called before this so we're like we're friends <laughs> and, um she was asking me about like the questions she should we were we were going to discuss during this call and one of them was like how does it feel to start from nothing and do a mm-hmm. it was a really interesting conversation between us because then it brought up the issue of privilege because I've gone, you know, I will say, like, I'm not going to put down the work that I've done either. I have worked really hard for Dumafe, but at the same time, I and, you know, you guys in my community, we also have to recognize, Bahwa, I didn't work from nothing. First of all, not even speaking financially, think morally. My family was always so supportive for me, not only to learn, but also to take action. And from there, my family is also very financially supportive. I could afford to think about more than my schoolwork and my, you know, social life, for example. And I could, I could make the decision to prioritize rumah fe over anything else other than school. Did he sebenarnya, you know, if I didn't have the, um, you know, the path that was facilitated to me when I was very young, I don't think rumah fe would have would have made it, right? Because I was so, so lucky to have a community who really supported me. And I, you know, my parents didn't necessarily have the women's rights, children's rights network that I was looking for, but they had a toe in the pool. I don't, I forgot the, I forgot the metaphor, but they, had, <laughs> they, they were, a, you know, they had the path that I could kind of go for. And, you know, I, here's the thing, not everybody's going to open doors to you, right? I, so when Rumafe first started, I sent like, 30, 40 letters, like handwritten letters to people, maybe untuk bikin network, untuk bikin jaringan. It was to activists, it was to kap, ka, kementerian, pokoknya kementerian kementerian, it was to actors and actresses even. Dari kayak 65, I don't know, however many puluhan itu, yang jawab cuma tiga. Right? Mm-hmm. And so that was without my parents' help. 
But with my parents, I could have access to way more networks and way more people than I could have ever imagined. And obviously, you know, I had to put in the work for that. Tapi the door for me was already unlocked. Right. And so I think, you know, at the end of the day, when we want to make a difference or when we want to start a change, we also have to reflect on what we have and what we can do with what we have. You know, when I talk, you know, I always I always try to say it's just that, like, we don't expect you to start a nonprofit or we don't expect you to go straight to changing the world. You know, Rumah Fe was never supposed to be this big, right? We just wanted to start those start and facilitate those little one-on-one -on -one discussions di komunitas-komunitas yang kita kenal gitu. That was, it was supposed to be just one place. But it grew because, first of all, there was a need for us to grow. But second of all, kita juga punya kapabilitas untuk terus berkembang, right? So I guess what I'm saying is just that, first of all, networks are so important. I, you know, it was just a sub subtopic. Uh -huh. Tapi, um, it's okay to start small and it's also okay to stay small sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. um, you just go where the wind takes you, but also work hard for it. So among, I, I'm the first to say that I've gotten so much. And I think with the privilege that I've gotten, and may, maybe some of you have, maybe some of you um, can relate, um, but with the privilege that we have, whatever privilege we have, we have some sort of responsibility to do something for our communities, whether that's through getting involved. And I do believe that sebagian anak kayaknya Gen Z semua kan rata-rata di sini. As Generation Z or members of Generation Z, we have such a unique way to contribute to our communities. What I'm saying by that is, You know, dulu mungkin jadi relawan itu agak susah ya. Tapi sekarang there's websites like indorelawan.org, kita bisa .com, um, campaign.id that all try to facilitate our need to our need to help others to do service either. So yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's initiative and it's taking advantage of what we have to do something better. Yeah, that's yeah. I totally agree. And you, uh, you mentioned that you had to basically balance out school and then growing and then growing up you know from from a kid to a teenager so puberty and then room and then organizing room yeah, room. Room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah so um i'm checking out the sido questions right now and it actually relates to one of the questions i was about to ask you so okay. you know with all that um uh with all the privilege but then you still have to uh grow up you know from a girl to like a woman and all that there's gonna be challenges along the way so how did you what are those challenges and how did you overcome those challenges this is also a question by Louisa Louisa oh hello okay so I guess it's just so it's first of all apakaya how did I kind of like balance my time as like a teenager and as a mafe mm -hmm. and then second of all what was the other one How did you uh, basically? How did you overcome any challenge? And the okay. challenge Louisa is specifically asking is if when people doubted you. Oh yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. first of all, kaya growing up with Rumafe. I mean, so Rumafe started in 2013, October 2013. So udah enam jilang tujuh tahun. Wow. Um, very yeah, it's a very long wow. time. Uh, at one point, I'm gonna spend more. You know, at at one point, I'm gonna spend more time with Rumafe than like without it, which is which is strange. Mm -hmm. Um, tapi. You know, it was hard. Uh, I gave up a lot of time. Uh, I gave up multiple friends as well, starting Roma Fe. Sonia, yeah, Roma Fe was and is more important to me than a lot of things. And it meant that my priorities sometimes were different from the people that I knew at the time. And it meant missing a lot of very important events for some of my friends. And it meant, you know, not being able to hang out with my friends as much and okay. not get as much sleep. But it's it's really not a <clears throat> it's not a choice that I regret because when I first started Rumafe, my mom sat me down and we made a list of priorities. In that sense, it's like number one, itoapa, number two, itoapa. And number, you know, like the finalized list was that number one is school, number two is Rumafe, and then like everything else. And I remember making that list and I was a bit nervous because I just I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't know that it meant that I would lose several friends and it sucks, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, Rumafe was a decision that I made and I knew clear as day, as much as it was scary, as much as it made me nervous, I knew that this was the priority that I wanted to put all my effort into. Um, and I gave up a lot of friends, <laughs> a lot of like 
hangouts and things but I also consider myself very blessed because today I have you know some pe the people who surround me are the most supportive people they're all individually passionate about lots of different things and I think it's absolutely incredible um, the things that they've done as well because they're all doing um, different you know they're all handling they're tackling their own social issues or environmental issues um, and so I just think at the end of the day like priorities are priorities um, when it came to time management, it was something I did struggle with at one point, but I just tried to make sure to remember number satu ya sekolah, if there's an exam, ya aku belajar. Tapi kalau ada, kalau ada ujian, terus aku ada rapat, ya I can't go to whatever is happening with the gang. But then if there's no school, if there's no work that I have to do, then, you know, I kick back. So it's, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just priorities. Sih, buat aku. Um, and then... When, was there a time when people doubted me as a child? Definitely for sure. I, you know, I became a speaker at a lot of different events where I was the only girl and I was expected to represent both like young people and all women. And it was terrible. I kind of, I pulled back from several speeches because of it. I believe that uh, female representation, not just as tokenism, but as genuine representation of female success is so, so important. Um, and there's not enough of it in Indonesia. And so really there was a lot of that, but again, I do consider myself lucky because I did have the support of my family, which was enough for me. Jadi in terms of like, cause I think what, what holds a lot of people back, a lot of my peers back and myself as well at one point was just that I felt insecure because I let people make me feel that way at that. Like I, I didn't really have the support system to understand. Like I had the support system that made me understand that I could do something. Right, and so people did talk a lot, especially kayak, yeah, soalnya aku muda banget sih, and I, you know, a part of me almost feels like it's kind of fair that they were like, who yeah. are you? You know, you come yeah, out of me, you're yeah, yeah. 11 years old, you're acting like you know everything. Yeah. <laughs> you're Understandable. And, um, and I would, you know, I would walk into these guys, so I, I, I joined a lot of seminars until now about like trafficking, and I would walk in, and first of all, I'm obviously the youngest person, and second of all, all these people are activists who have kayak, decades of experience on these They've been working anti-trafficking and human rights for years, longer than I've been alive. Mm -hmm. And I felt so scary. Jadi, um, akhirnya, you know, I, I decided that I wanted to challenge myself um, and keep learning. Maksudnya kan, emang yang paling penting untuk kita untuk mau jadi aktivis, untuk menjadi, you know, untuk membuat gerakan sosial gitu istil istilahnya, adalah untuk terus belajar, cari pengetahuan. And so, um, that's that's what I did. It, it goes back to the other point you said about just, you know, having the perseverance to keep on learning and educating yourself. And then on top of that, the challenge you must face is balance. Uh, yeah. You yourself on balance, Jadi, And how you overcame that was prioritizing and, you know, um, time management, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, jadi sekarang Kak Shiva bakal present beberapa pertanyaan yang masuk di Slido. Karena ini banyak banget yang masuk, and then Faye biar juga bisa lihat the yeah. questions. They're really, oh my god, they're so much, so cool. <laughs> okay, so let me pick one. Tadi I had a short skim. Um, tadi, ini, ini, oh here. From Sharla. What can we do to make changes after educating ourselves? And how was your experience starting this organization yeah. at such a young age? Obstacles? Oh, well, I think that one was covered, the second question. So I think we can just focus on the first one. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. can we do to help make changes after educating ourselves? You know, like, not, not just um, me, everyone here watching, the rookies, you know, how, how do we start... Um, making more changes, I guess also being more socially aware after educating ourselves. The next step, basically. Yeah, I think, first of all, yeah, um, with aku sendiri, there's no such thing as after educating ourselves, aku sendiri, you know, I, I've i never done educating myself, especially about social issues. Soalnya, ad, selalu ada pengetahuan yang baru gitu loh. Selalu ada, like, there's always a policy draft yang baru untuk bisa dibaca, dan perspektif baru, apalagi tentang isu-isu hak anak. Um, because it's, it's still a gray area legally. Um, but if we have reached, you know, where a point where we believe that we we we've gotten a lot of knowledge, menurut aku kita perlu ya mungkin nggak ngajar ya, tapi untuk membantu teman-teman dan komunitas kita belajar lebih banyak tentang isu-isu tersebut. Soalnya at the end of the day, 
kalau kita sendiri tahu tapi kita nggak nyebar informasi yang akurat dan hmm. yang hmm. ya yang akurat itu tuh nggak akan ada dampaknya right kita harus mulai dari dalam tapi harus ada keluarannya juga kenapa rumah V didirikan kan itu karena aku pribadi percaya dalam peer to peer education itu bahwa untuk adanya perubahan harus ada pemberdayaan anak muda dan pemberdayaan anak muda hanya bisa didapetin melalui ya ya bukan panel um, diskusi kan I feel like anak remaja kita tuh curious banget dan kita juga banyak berpendapat tapi kalau pendapat kita itu tidak terus di salurkan iya yeah. then what's the point ya yeah. so I just you know I just think at the end of the day our own responsibility sebagai anak ya bukan cuma sebagai anak Indonesia ya sebagai anak itu tuh untuk um, meng- memulai dialog dengan teman-teman dengan komunitas dan kalau bisa bukan cuma ngobrol aja ya tapi bawa you know bring that discussion dialog dialog itu ke dalam institusi-institusi yang kita yang kita menduduki menduduki jadi contoh kan kalian kayaknya kalau nggak salah SMP SMA kan what can you do in your school kan bisa mulai klub bisa mulai apa bisa even bisa ngomong ke guru kalau ada pernah ada kasus pelecehan seksual soalnya sebenarnya ada banyak banget kasus-kasus pelecehan seksual angka angka kekerasan seksual pada anak itu uh, ya dari tahun 2016 oke okay, actually I don't wanna name it takutnya agak salah tapi itu naik angkanya tahun ini uh, tahun 2019 jadi and the cases itu tuh mayoritas ada di dalam sekolah kenapa nah um, sebagai anak kita juga Maksudnya the school is supposed to be our, our place to learn, our place to thrive. Dan oleh karena itu, kita juga punya tanggung jawab untuk mencoba menjadi lebih, gimana ya, engaged dalam mencari solusi ke masalah-masalah yang mungkin dihadapi oleh teman-teman sebaya kita. Jadi, you know, at the end of the day, menurut aku, untuk bisa mencegah isu-isu kekerasan seksual, isu-isu perdagangan anak, apalagi kekerasan seksual pada anak, kita harus secara langsung mencari cara untuk mengimplementasikan solusi ke dalam institusi-institusi yang um, di mana kami sudah terlibat gitu. Jadi kita juga jangan, maksudnya as much as there's a lot of things that have to be fixed on a systematic level di pemerintah gitu, kita adanya di sekolah. So what, what can we do when we can start there? Gitu sih. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we can't just educate ourselves by just letting all the information in, but we also have to, you know, start conversations, engage with people. Yeah, that's completely right. And if you want to take it to the next step, um, engage with people who have quote unquote more power than you. You know what I mean? Like as a as a kid, like you said, your school, gitu kan, or institutions. So and that's so important, kan? More power. Yeah. Itu enggak artinya kita harus langsung ke nulis surat ke Pak Presiden, gitu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's great. He has a lot on his plate, and you know, mm-hmm. he does want to help. Tapi kita mulai dari kita sendiri juga, gitu. Kan mm-hmm. kita udah kita udah belajar. Mm-hmm. Terus kita ngomong ke guru, terus ke capsec atau ke osis or you know, like whatever level of the hierarchy is. And yeah. Cool. Um, tapi ya begitu menurut aku emang kita harus mulai perubahan dari hal yang kecil menjadi hal yang besar. Makanya rumah V juga kita fokus pada satu komunitas itu karena itu kapabilitas kita aja. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which which definitely uh, validates the cliche of you know small changes can make a big difference basically yeah. right yep. yeah totally understand so yeah let's move on to another question aku tadi lihat di slidonya ada dari um oh here Bella she's asking if you have any chance to improve your organization what would it be oh hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> a lot, actually, a lot, a lot of things. So, if we're talking about like current okay, situation now, like what I would do to improve, probably. So, uh, my team in Batam is oh, shoot, eleven or twelve people. I should know, eleven or thirteen. I'm pretty sure eleven or thirteen people. Tapi my team in Jakarta is only three people. Oh. Um, yeah, we run mostly on volunteers, and we're so so grateful for them. Including you, three. Oh, including me four, including okay. me four. <laughs> uh, including my mom as the legal co-founder. She's five, but yeah, we don't work full time. So I guess four, yeah. Um, and so I guess I would I would probably 
if I could improve one thing, I would want to hire like a couple more people to Jakarta just to distribute the workload better for my team here in Jakarta. Um, that's that's what I think would be much better. I also think, you know, this is, I don't know if this is unique to Rumafe, but um, just it's sometimes teamwork can be just really hard, especially since, kan ada, ya ada, apa sih, the organization structure is a bit, for Rumafe, it's a bit hard just because we have two locations and it's agak berantakan because we deal, you know, we don't, we don't deal with like objects, we deal with people, you know, we deal it with real life. Mm-hmm. It's quite hard. Um, I wish, so I guess those two, and I guess the last two, the first one would probably be that, uh, sorry, the third one would probably just be that I could get better um, mental health um, access for my staff, for my team, you know, um, I guess it's kind of obvious kalau aku aku ngomong sekarang kan tentang perdagangan anak jadi ya udah pasti isunya berat gitu tapi mm-hmm. sebagai ya sebagai aktivis atau sebagai you know somebody who works at a non-profit itu kerja sehari-harian kita sometimes we forget how heavy it is and it suddenly hits us mm-hmm. you know and I know kayak timku semua di Jakarta dan di Batam mereka tuh emang struggle banget sama um, isu-isu kesehatan mental um, and we do try our best to provide um, you know counseling tapi Um, menurut aku kita bisa we could do better we could do better for that and I think that's something I would I would really emphasize um, the last one the fourth one if we could improve is that harapan so I don't know if this this ini lebih harapan sih kali ya tapi okay. rumah V sekarang emang jadi kita punya rumah aman kan tapi rumah amannya itu hanya untuk anak perempuan di bawah 18 tahun that's our specialty um, we sometimes do help kids outside of the safe house and we have helped women over 18 Um, but a uh, target population that I would love to help more um, is victims of child trafficking or child sexual abuse yang sebenarnya pri- yang laki-laki. Karena mm-hmm. ada banyak banget, ya relatif mungkin nggak terlalu, kalau dibandingin mungkin nggak sebanyak kasus-kasus kekerasan seksual pada perempuan, uh, anak uh, perempuan, tapi masih ada. Dan resources-nya itu kurang banget. Jadi harapan, ini lebih harapan sih, harapanku tuh bahwa Rumah V bisa mendirikan rumah aman lagi, belum tahu di mana, belum tahu kapan, tapi spesifik untuk korban kekerasan seksual pada anak yang laki-laki di Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we don't, we don't know <laughs> kalau ada resources. Yeah. Itu harapan aku itu sih bahwa kita bisa lebih mem- mengembangkan misi kita biar uh, membantu lebih banyak orang aja sih yang menjadi uh, korban kekerasan so seksual. Like- expanding not only like quantity of people work to one care you know the, the the people who you are reaching to okay yeah. which just like a new audience which is boys basically right and oh no they, you know, kalau untuk program pencegahan emang kita ngomong sama kita emang ngomong perempuan dan laki kan yeah, yeah. also we have helped um, a couple cases of male victims of uh, child trafficking sexual exploitation mm-hmm. atau kekerasan mm-hmm. tapi Emang karena kita nggak ada rumah amannya kan, and mm-hmm. our, our safe house is like the core of the rehabilitation process. Jadi mungkin ya yeah, again balik ke kapabilitas aja sih. Menurut aku kita bisa melakukan. If we can do more, I'd like to do much more. Okay, yeah. So uh, let me correct myself. Maksudnya untuk rumah amannya, yes. <laughs> and who knows? Who knows? Maybe nanti our rookies in the future bisa you know work with rumah fee juga. Mungkin we would love di Jakarta if you're hiring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, jadi uh, uh, the girls kalau ada yang mau raise hand terus nanya langsung ke Faye, kalian boleh banget. And I'm sure Faye would love to hear your question. I love when I raise hand. Like don't be shy. <laughs> And and while we're nggak tahu belum ada ya. And while we're waiting, yeah, okay. Jadi rumah Faye, we're we're very volunteer based. Mm-hmm. Jadi we do rely a lot on our volunteers both in Jakarta and Batam. Jadi kalau di Jakarta, gini aku aku benar-benar percaya bahwa sesuatu hal yang sangat penting itu bahwa relawan kita bukan sekedar relawan. They don't just come in, play with the kids, terus leave. Mm-hmm. Because we know that when they come into rumah Faye, mereka itu emang udah punya kepedulian untuk uh, isu-isu anak. Jadi we try to get them a lot of um, apa sih skill character building skill building workshops. Jadi mereka bisa dengar dari um, a lot of different awesome speakers like child psychologists, children's rights lawyers, uh, human rights advocates. Biar mereka tuh akhirnya bukan cuma dapat experience menjadi relawan, tapi experience that they can apply to other things in their lives as well. Um, so yeah, just sharing. Yeah. You see, you see somebody has. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So Dayu, right? Yeah, Dayu, you guys, you can just speak to the microphone langsung. Okay. Hi, Kak. And actually, 
relating to volunteering, can okay. we volunteer or are there any qualifications for that? Like, yeah. is it okay for us to volunteer gitu? Langsung aja gitu. Yeah, jadi emang rumah face volunteering is a bit, is a bit iffy kali ya. Soalnya, jadi bukan iffy sih. Jadi kita ada dua grup volunteer. Pertama, namanya sahabat V. I know we came up with it a long time ago. <laughs> Karena aku nggak ada teman, I was lonely, so I was like, I wanted to name it Sahabat Faye. Jadi, um, Sahabat Faye, and these are rata-rata college grads, or they're in college. And they work as volunteers, they're, you know, more traditional volunteers, mereka, they get the capacity building class. We have a, I don't know if, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have like a volunteer retreat. So you guys get to hang out with us for a night or two, and we hang out in wherever, it's, it's fun, pokoknya, anyway. Um, terus kita juga ada youth team. Dan the youth team is a lot like the, the sahabat V. Tapi mereka semua tuh usia, ya mungkin seumuran sama kalian ya, um, SMP, SMA. Um, our youngest one, Lara, she joined two years ago. So she was in SMP 2. She's, she's the best. She's awesome. And they just, they do kind of the same thing as sahabat V. But because they're younger, they get, you know, they have parental consent. We, we you know, hold hands with them a little bit more. And we just try to make sure that they have fun with us. Other than that, we also have internships for high schoolers. So last year we started them and we have two each year. Jadi tahun lalu kita ada dua, dua kayaknya mereka, oh ya yeah, SMA, mereka SMA dua mau naik tiga. Um, mereka magang sama kita selama dua bulan, kalau nggak salah, terus bulan ini baru mulai juga. So we have a new set of interns, um, of high school interns. Satu, ya, yeah, they're really cool. Um, anyway, jadi sebenarnya relawan di rumah V, because we handle such heavy issues, it's it does have an application process karena kita emang kita nggak mau ngasal ngomong apalagi kalau tentang isu seperti kekerasan seksual dan kesehatan reproduksi um, jadi it does take there is a process jadi ada beberapa pertanyaan there's a form to fill out but if you get in through the short the long list nanti kita interview terus bisa masuk ke relawan-relawan kita so it's when it's open only we usually open it once every two years give or take depending on the need tapi kalau kalian mau jadi terlibat dalam cara yang lain kayak kayak mau magang atau mau kolaborasi kalian mau bikin kegiatan kita tuh seneng banget bisa terlibat so you know volunteering is not the only way you can get involved in rumah but it's definitely an option as well mm-hmm. makes sense yeah. 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 Okay. So, thank you so girls ya yeah. kalau mau ada apa apa you guys can keep up with rumah fe and stuff Um, also, kalau kalian ada yang nanya pertanyaan di Slido, tapi mau nanya langsung ke Faye aja, like, you guys can raise your hand again, terus nanti tinggal ngomong, kalau enggak, then I'll just get on with the Slido. Kalau ada yang raise hand, silakan. Raise hand dong, biar kita bisa ngobrol. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, uh, oh. oh two, oke. Okay. So, first, uh, Saira, Alesha, am I saying your name right? You, got, you can speak. Uh, hi, so um, I know that this is this is quite a heavy subject, and as mentioned before, it's a taboo. So how do you find, uh, you mentioned earlier that at the start, you like get close with the girls and like be friends with them. Yeah. So, um, do you have like, do you target a particular community that is more vulnerable? Or does it actually happen that much? Yeah, great question. Jadi, uh, before we go down to this, these different areas, we do as uh, we do field assessments or uh, assessment lapangan. So my team and I, depending on who's available, usually it's two people from my team. We go down to this area and we kind of map out what is the neighborhood like and what happens in that neighborhood. So a lot of the a lot of the areas that we go to, there are a large number of brothels of um play of of sex workers, um, and you know our primary concern is not that of sex work, but it's of forced prostitution and sexual exploitation. So we have a lot of cases where these kids they grew up in environments like these and believe they don't have a, another choice, right? Mereka biasanya putus sekolah, they don't they don't finish school, and so. We do field assessments. We talk to community leaders. Usually, it's there the pairwe, and we just discuss with them how Rumafe can go down to help. And first of all, let me be clear: whenever we go down, we're always rejected at first. Um, we've been rejected so many times to these different areas because we establish ourselves as a as an organization that's anti-sexual tra- exploitation, and that means that there is sexual exploitation in their community. 
But again, we come in as, you know, we come in as peers, not necessarily as like teachers or as mentors. And so after the field assessment, we come in, we bring gifts sometimes, we just hang out with the kids and we don't go straight into the materi. Jadi kita nggak langsung masuk and we're like, oh, reproductive health. No, we come in as friends. And then when once we build the relationships, we start our, you know, istilahnya our curriculum about reproductive health and child trafficking. So Rumafe right now handles three plus one. So three communities and like jointly handles another one with another organization. And we, you know, we contribute, we come to them once every two weeks or once a month, depending on the area and what we can do to them, do for them. Sometimes it's even once a week, um, depending on the need. And right now, because of COVID-19, we provide COVID-19 relief boxes for all of them. So during this pandemic, we are donating a little over 1,300 boxes of sembako for all four of all five of our communities, because um, we have we have, we're helping out another community as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we again we really focus on relationships over anything else. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Make sense, yeah? Thank you. Okay, thank Ready? you. So we have another question. Um, I mean, someone raised their hand, Fayola Jacinta. So you can just okay. okay, hello, Kak. I think I I want to ask that. Hi. <laughs> uh, I want to ask that. Uh, can uh, there is there there are many of them can tahu kalau misalnya mereka harassed, but are there any of them who don't know that they are sexually harassed? It's a great question. Um, actually, very good question. Jadi uh, kita banyak banget kasus di mana anak-anak. It's not that. Jadi mereka tahu mereka tuh korban kekerasan. Most of the time, because yeah, istilahnya it hurts, right? It's violence, um, but they don't know what kind of violence, and sometimes they don't even know kayak oh ini tuh illegal. Karena istilahnya ya ini mungkin budaya budaya kita bukan cuma sebagai Indonesia ya, tapi sebagai maybe it's a, it's an Asian culture as well that in a way sometimes parents have an authority that sometimes we cannot question. And on one side, parents are definitely authority figures we should love and respect. Tapi ada um, you know there's a fine line between an authority figure we love and our respect and an authority figure we fear. Dan ada banyak banget kasus di mana ada kekerasan seksual di dalam keluarga yang anaknya merasa bahwa oh, ini tanggung jawab aku sebagai anak untuk men, men gimana ya? just to take that burden. So we have a lot of cases of sexual violence among family members um, from an older usually an older male whether it's a grandfather, a father, an uncle and they sexually harass or abuse a younger female. Um, And so usually when the female comes into the um, into our safe house, bukannya mereka nggak tahu mereka itu korban, tapi mereka merasa bahwa mereka itu they deserve to be a victim. Soalnya istilahnya it's their fate, and you know like they have to give up something for their family and things like that. So we had a case where um, her one of our girls, her grandfather was abusing her because he was paying for her school, and so. That's you know it's cases like that where there's kind of a gray area karena anak-anak merasa bahwa oh nggak apa-apa deh gitu ini kan apa ini kan uh, kakek gitu gitu um, so yeah there's a lot of the reason why cases of sexual violence go unreported is because kids not only are unaware that they can um, report it but also that they don't understand that it's illegal and that they don't deserve to be treated this way gitu. Um, jadi iya sih, most of them know something is wrong, tapi biasanya mereka merasa bahwa mereka nggak bisa melaporkan kasus-kasus atau enggak, mereka merasa mereka nggak layak untuk menjadi, ya yes, istilahnya, a survivor. Gitu. Yeah. Thank you, Kak. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. A lot of follow-up? Oke. Okay. Great, Kak. Thank you. Thank you guys for raising your hands and asking langsung with Faye. Um, kita bentar lagi udah mau habis nih waktunya jadi <laughs> jadi like Faye maybe you can give like some closing remarks kayak just like little like summary advices about um, about like social awareness lah ya what we can yeah. do um, you know usually when when people ask me to do like last remarks something I always say and this is this is like my trademark itu bahwa tindakan nyata is the key to everything you know real action based on deep knowledge is the key to change but lately you know especially with everything going on not only covid-19 but blm and a lot of other like environmental issues as well coming up right now i know i i, I guess i kind of want to take a different like take 
um, today just because like I know how exhausting it must be. Soalnya mm-hmm. kalian semua pasti, you know, I know that you guys because you're here, you guys want to make a change. You guys want to know new things. But when you open like social media, when you open Instagram or Twitter or whatever, you know, social media you use, akhirnya pasti kalian juga capek gitu because you feel so overwhelmed. And sometimes you might feel like you don't deserve a break because you resting might feel like, oh, okay, I'm letting the world burn when I'm not like doing something. And that's, you know, I, I definitely understand that. I can't say that I've completely gone over that. But if I could leave a lasting report, remark on you guys, it's just to remember that you can't change the world if you're not at your best. And this has been on my mind because, you know, I just, I posted this on Instagram. Yeah. So it's kind of- I awesome. saw that. I love I that so much. I mean, it's true, you know, yes. like yes. people are going to tell you to go like change the world. And that's so true. I'm telling you to change the world, but also world change means rest, right? You cannot, you cannot change the world if you're not at your best and you belong. I know that if you guys are here, you belong on this journey, on this kayak on this journey to changing the world untuk menjadi pengunjang dunia gitu ya istilahnya tapi you can't do that if you don't rest and so um yes go change the world go out of your comfort zone become leaders tapi jangan lupa bahwa it's okay to take a rest and it's okay to be tired just the key is don't stop fighting that's very inspirational and i love that you ended it in a very high note and basically yeah you, you know you And that's also similar to one of the values I also hold dear to. It's actually uh, something I read from Maudi Ayunda's book, and it's like you can't, you can't, uh, you can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself first. You know, like so that's very relatable to what you said. And yeah, me, maafkan nyata. She's like, yes, yes, that too. Of course, that too. Um, maaf banget, gak semua pertanyaannya bisa di cover di Slido. So if you guys have any more questions, you can just kaya straight up DM Faye or Rumah Faye, right? Um, I'd love to chat with you guys. I think Faye, you should type in your Instagram oh. at <laughs> at the at the <laughs> chat box because you guys will we'll see. Yeah, you guys will see why I ask her to type it because it's Choco Dog and it's uh, it's a cute name. Dog. It's a cute name. It's a cute name. Or you can also go to add Rumah Faye. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Faye, for you know spending time with us and the rookies. So kita maybe do you want to take a picture now, Kak Nadine, Kak Shifa? Okay. Yeah. So everyone, if you please, girls, turn on your video. Biar kita bisa foto bareng sama. Hey. I'm so sad I can't just hang out in real life with everybody. I know, like aku tuh udah bayangin, like if we were all <laughs> in in it. New York, and then kayak kita bisa foto bareng in person, terus ketemu bareng in person, and sometimes like people would even still ask you questions after that. <laughs> Kayak seru. Iya, <laughs> karena din soon, soon, soon. Ya, yeah, I mean. <laughs> so yeah, yang foto bakalan siapa ya? Yang foto bakal Kak Sap. Kak Hai. Sap udah ready? Yes. Oke. Satu, dua, tiga. One more time. 